Okay, I want to. Thank you. Okay, so guys, it's time for your character. Go on the screen. Stay on the white one. So what do we have? Huh? Six. 
yeah? Sulfur. Hydrogen only has one valence electron. So if you want to do some sharing, this is the most ideal. Let's double check. Let's look around S, sulfur. Does it have eight valence electrons now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight valence electrons. Okay? This is okay. Dihydrogen sulfide. Okay? So this will be an IDE. If you see an ATE, so that one will be for later on in the chapter. We are going to introduce to you a different kind of uh, something that is really sulfate. Okay? In this case, it's sulfide, uh, not sulfate. Also, you will spell sulfide as S U L F I D E. It's an F, not a PH. Okay? It's an F, not a PH. Long time ago in my time, uh, we used to spell sulfur with a PH. But they changed it to F. Okay. Uh, this one. Next one. Nitrogen trihydride, also known as ammonia. Let's count the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen is in group. Group uh, for fifteen. Nitrogen group fifteen. Okay. Let's have a look. Uh. if it's in group fifteen, how many valence electrons should it have? Five valence electrons. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we have one extra uh, electron over here. Okay. It's okay, I'm gonna remove the electron, okay? So we have one extra electron. Okay, now let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five electrons, okay, for nitrogen. Hydrogen has one electron each. Let's do some sharing. Okay, after we share, does nitrogen now have a stable of ten? Configuration or normal gas configuration. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So this is nitrogen trihydride. Let's look at hydrogen bromide. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Bromine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven valence electrons. Okay. It's in group 17. So now, after sharing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hydrogen bromide. Okay, this is also okay. Okay, moving on. Can I get another four students up to dem uh, demonstrate their answers? Starting with carbon dioxide, then carbon tetrahydride. Uh, Kaisi, can you, you pick one? Which one you want to do? Carbon tetrahydride or carbon dioxide? Tetrahydride? Okay. Then carbon dioxide. Can I get another boy? There's so few boys. Chong Chen. Okay. Carbon dioxide. Okay, come. Come. Thank you. Message, uh. A lot of things will pop up there. No message, uh. No message, no message. Okay, then the next two. I have phosphorus, trichloride. Phosphorus, trichloride, oxygen dichloride. Okay, phosphorus, trichloride. Can I get uh, Sophia? Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. Can I see? Thank you. Okay, uh, and phosphorus try alright. Okay, so that will be Sophia. Then the next one, oxygen dichloride. Thank you. Oxygen dichloride. So girl boy, girl boy, boy. Boy. Girl. So few boys. Can we call before it? Yeah. Maybe I'll support already. Yeah. Josh, you can. Try? Oxygen. 
hydrogen dan klorik. This one is fluorine oxide. Okay, uh, it is different. So you put it as oxygen dichloride. Usually, if you look in a periodic table, the element that appears on the left hand side first, we will put their name down first. Right, then we will put the one on the chlorine next. Yeah? We cancel out the F2O that they give us. Yeah, okay, but you should still get the same thing, right? Uh, dot in cross diagram wise. Wait, so we change the formula. Yeah, OF2, but would you get the same thing? Same thing. F2O, OF2, uh, same thing, uh, same, same. Okay? So I say again, normally if you have two elements, we will put the one that appears in the periodic table on the left hand side first. Okay, so these are the last four that we'll look through. Same thing, maybe you can do yourself a favor, uh, check your friend's work. Count the number of electrons first. Is this the correct number? For example, carbon. Which group does carbon belong to? Therefore, how many valence? Okay, let's look through. Number one, carbon dioxide by Shongzhen. Carbon has how many valence electrons? Four, right? Okay, because it's in group 14. So four valence electrons. One, two, three, and four. Oxygen has how many valence? Six, because it's in group 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so she made a decision to share uh, these many electrons. So therefore, if I just look at this region over here, how many covalent bonds have you created? Two covalent bonds. Okay, if I were to represent it in this form, this is what carbon dioxide look like. Two bonds each. Okay? So four bonds in total. Okay, let's count. Valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, for oxygen. Carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay for carbon. Same for oxygen on the other side. Okay, good job, Simpson. Next, let's look at carbon tetrahydride by Kaisin. Carbon again as for group 14, 4 electrons, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Hydrogen just 1 electron each. Let's do a quick count to check. Carbon now has a noble gas configuration. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Thank you, Kaisin. Next one, uh, Sophia, right? Okay, Sophia, how many electrons does phosphorus have? Chana Resha, which uh, group is phosphorus in? Maybe you check, Sophia. 15. Uh. 15? So therefore, phosphorus needs to have 5 valence electrons. <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Chlorine is in group. 17. Okay, so chlorine should have 7 valence electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Okay, good. Okay. I see a bond formed between chlorine, phosphorus, and chlorine. Then this chlorine very lonely. Is it forming bond with anyone? No. Okay, so first, uh, chlorine over here doesn't seem to have any friends. Next, we look at chlorine up here. I see too much. Remember? So we always count and check. Uh, let's check phosphorus. Does it have 8 valence electrons now? It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, let's look at chlorine. Chlorine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Everyone seems to have a little bit too much to share around. Okay? Uh, so, perhaps we could share it with this fella who has no friends. Okay, maybe we give away. We share an electron with chlorine here. Possible? Okay, so one way to think about this is if chlorine has seven valence electrons, it just needs one more for chlorine. It just needs one more for chlorine. So uh, let me erase all of these away. We'll try again. Uh. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. Uh, okay, 
Very nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, phosphorus has five valence electrons. So let's share first. Uh, let's share first. Okay, we share one with chlorine because this all chlorine needs more. Oh. We share another with chlorine because this chlorine needs one more. We share another with this chlorine because this chlorine needs just one more. What's left? Oh, phosphorus. Two left. Okay, two more electrons left, right? So we will just leave the remaining pair on the top just by itself. Okay, so that's phosphorus tetrafluoride. Uh, make sure when you're doing your workings that all of your friends are connected to each other. Okay? All the elements are connected to each other. Then it will be shared quite well. Yes, is it? Uh, which one? This one? This one? Okay. Oh, sorry. Now, I made a mistake. Actually, I shouldn't represent it this way. I should represent it shared like that, right? Thanks, easy. So like that. So, is this how you share? Okay. Finally, let's look at George one. George, uh, F has how many valence electrons? I believe seventeen. It's group seventeen, so seven valence. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oxygen, group sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Have they shared? They shared one each. So let's have a look up. Uh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, for fluorine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, for oxygen. Okay, for fluorine. Yeah? Okay, so Josh one also okay. Alright, so have a look at your answers. Yes, Jimmy? Oh, sorry? What do you call the F1? The F is it? Okay, so this is called oxygen. Okay, oxygen dye fluoride. Oh, why can't we call it fluorine oxide, is it? Okay, so normally we would put the see okay, look at your periodic table. Am I right to say oxygen is to the left of fluorine? Usually when we do the naming, the one on the, the element that appears on the left hand side, we will put it down first. Then we'll put the other element on the right to the right of it next. Okay, look at the periodic table. Okay, so we give we give whoever comes first on the periodic table from left to right. Okay. Okay, so that's 5.1. Can I collect your 5.1? I want to just do a quick check. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You want to study for this Friday quiz or? Huh? There's a quiz this Friday. Now this Friday I'll do a quiz on uh, bonds. A graded quiz. No, it's not graded. For your learning, yeah. So covalent and ionic. Okay. Okay. Then maybe you keep this worksheet so that you can practice again. You okay, keep the worksheet. Then I'll collect every. Try to collect. Okay. Let me see how. Okay. Mm. okay. So you keep it first for your revision on Friday. Okay. Then please take out five point two. Okay. Okay, come. Maybe put on your mask, drink some water. Some of you look a bit sleepy. Okay, RE5.2 
go back really fast. This is the first thing. So we just add that.
So for example, nitrogen, there's one phase here, another phase here, another phase here, another phase here. Each phase, we try to put only one extra element. Okay? Don't try to squeeze two in one phase. Like don't put two chlorine here. Instead, spread them out. So one chlorine and one phase, another chlorine and another phase, another chlorine and another phase. <coughs> Next, whatever electrons are left, can you pair them up? Okay? Whatever electrons are left, just pair them up. Okay? So this one, no, it's a bit too crowded. Okay, next, they ask you to draw a particle model diagram with clear labels for nitrogen chloride. Okay, what's a particle model diagram? Particle model diagram means like last time, when I asked you to draw a particle model diagram for solid, then you draw something like this. You draw them all packed very close to each other. If I ask you to draw a particle model diagram for liquid, then you may have drawn something that is uh, Rolling about each other, not so compactly packed to each other. Plus, you draw gas, you draw them far apart. So, they want you to draw a particle model diagram of this particular uh, compound. How will you draw that? Well, you can just take this, and then you put the nitrogen and chlorine inside. So, N, then Cl, Cl, Cl. Right? And fill up the rest with N, Cl, Cl, Cl. Okay? You could draw dotted lines between each one to represent the weak forces of attraction between them. So it looks something like that. Yes, Haya? Do you have to link everything together? Or can you like oh, don't need to link everybody together. Okay, as long as you show me some inter... Okay, we, we, we turn this intermolecular Forces of attraction. Yes. Hey, sorry, I answered Henry first. Huh? Oh, you raised hand. Yeah? How do you know whether it's in the form, whether the draw in the form of liquid or gas? Oh, great question. Okay. Uh, Henry asks, how do you know whether it's gas or liquid? Okay. And this is how you tell. You look at the boiling point and melting point we gave you. It melts at minus 40 degrees, boils at 71. Draw a particle yeah. model diagram of nitrogen trichloride. Okay, so actually at room temperature, where will it be actually? Liquid. Yeah, liquid. Right, we look at that. Huh? Negative 40 it melts, 71 it boils. So actually past 71 then gaseous state. Room temperature is actually liquid. So if you had drawn a liquid version of this, let's say you draw them closer to each other. You draw them closer to each other. So all is okay. Yeah, if you draw them closer to each other, that's also okay because we did not give you the temperature at which we want it to be at. Then so it's okay. Then if you're supposed to draw it in a solid, you just draw all of them very close to each other, then don't you draw the dotted line? Yeah, you cannot draw the dotted lines if they are side by side each other. Okay, so at solid state, if at solid state, you will draw all the N, C, L, C, L, C, L inside, but you cannot draw dotted lines anymore. They are already very close to each other. Okay? So as you heat something up, what you are doing is you are interfering with these bonds, intermolecular force of attraction between. We are weakening them such that they go further and further and further apart. What we are not doing is we're not breaking the covalent bonds between the elements. We're not breaking them at all. Okay, we're not breaking them. If not, if I heat up water, right, technically you should get hydrogen and oxygen gas. But we don't. They still remain water. Yes. So how many of the like uh, molecules do you draw? Oh, how many to draw? Can you draw around four to five? Can you draw around four to five? If we ever ask of, uh, ask this from you again, draw around four to five. Okay, I'll show the diagram again. There are some annotations that you can do. Could you annotate your diagram also? Annotate the dotted lines as weak forces of attraction between the molecules. Do you need to write that in our answer? Or is it just like... Okay. It depends on what the question asks from you. The question asks you to annotate, then you need to... Sorry, you should.
Ah, okay. We don't do straight lines because these bonds aren't real bonds per se. They are not like covalent bonds or ionic bonds. They are very, 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 very strong uh, and quite permanent unless you put them through some chemical reaction to break it. Okay? These bonds are temporary, they can change around. That means to say, if I were to pick this fella and go to this region over here, you just form new intermolecular bonds of attraction. But, once, but for those, once bonded means bonded release. Yeah? We cannot just shift them around after that. Yeah? Same here, nitrogen, chlorine, chlorine. We cannot just shift the chlorine and nitrogen around in this the configuration. Okay? That's why these are weaker. You can still shift the molecules around. That's why they can flow. Air and water. Okay, so things to take note of. Can you label the covalent bonds? and label the intermolecular force of attraction, which are the dotted lines. Then next question, predict the state of nitrogen chloride at room temperature. Okay, how do you predict that? So, usually, melting point, boiling point. If we look at melting point, okay, boiling point, anything here will be gas, here will be liquid, here will be solid. Prior to melting, prior to boiling. The melting point here is negative 70 degrees Celsius. The boiling is 40, right? And this one is 71 degrees Celsius. Room temperature is around 32 degrees Celsius. So it will be liquid at this particular temperature, room temperature. Okay, room temperature and pressure. Pressure can affect the state of uh, substances also. But we don't we didn't quite cover that with you. Next time when you go upper change physics side, we'll talk more about okay, how pressure can affect your state. Okay? So predict the state, it will be liquid state. It will be liquid state at this particular temperature, at room temperature. Your quiz for sciences? No. 7th May, right? Yes, 7th May. Thank you. Okay, so it's on 7th of May, yeah? Huh? It's the official one. Sorry? That one is the official one. Yeah, yeah. official. So that one you don't go and bring in your notes, huh? Okay. No, 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 so don't, don't, don't bring your notes for that quiz, huh? That one you'll get caught. Okay, so 7th May, if you've not noted down. So when are you going to return after this? Oh, yeah, I've marked it already. I'm out over the weekend. Wait, sure. Is it during our uh, rest of the, the quiz? The quiz will be after school, if I have a problem. How long is it? Yeah, I think, oh, I can't remember. I think one and a half. Oh. It's all the topics that we have learned so far, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, must study uh, this quiz. Okay. Not going to be easy, so you're going to need to practice, okay? Practice, okay? Okay, draw dot and cross diagram for these two. Again, notice we don't provide you the elements, we just give the name. Sometimes as a student, I'll feel a little bit of tension here. I don't know which is ionic, which is covalent. How do you tell? Look at your periodic table. We actually provide something to you during the exams. Periodic table. So magnesium fluoride, is this ionic or is it covalent? Hydrogen fluoride, is it ionic? Is it covalent? Okay, spend some time, talk to your friends first, and then I'll ask maybe two people. Ionic or covalent? Yes. Okay, ready? Magnesium fluoride. Is this ionic or is it covalent? 
please explain your reasoning also. Cadence? What was my question? Okay, uh, magnesium chloride, is it ionic or covalent? Ionic, how do you tell it's ionic? Magnesium is a metal, and fluorine is a non-metal. Okay, thank you Cadence. So that is an ionic compound. Hydrogen fluoride, ionic or covalent? Yeah, ionic or covalent. Isabel? And how do you tell? They are both non-metal. So that's how we go about it. How do we draw that out? Okay, how do we draw that out? Once again, uh, if you have not tried drawing it, let's, you have, let's say you've not done it, you not look at the answers first. Okay, this is valuable practice. Okay, it's okay. Okay, don't look at the answers, try it yourself. And when you when you are done, then you look for me for the answers. Once it's a, once you look at the answers, it's an opportunity loss. Okay, so try it first. After that, maybe refer to your friend. Okay, so some things to check. Can you check for your ionic compound whether you have the charge at the top right hand corner? Check the charge. Is it a two plus for fluorine? Can you check that you have the valence number of electrons that is stable? Don't forget the charge in the top right hand corner. So usually students forget the charge. Okay, make sure you have the charge. Make sure it's not plus two, but two plus. Okay, next for hydrogen fluoride, this is what you should get. Check that fluorine has only eight valence electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, then you should be okay. Nicole asks, why don't we call magnesium fluoride magnesium difluoride? After all, it has two fluorines. Right? Why don't we call it difluoride? For ionic compounds, usually, regardless of whether we have two magnesium or four magnesium or two fluorine, we don't reflect that in the naming because it forms a giant lattice structure they can interact with anyone around them so usually we don't we don't uh, convey the number at the end of the day because it's a ratio it is a ratio that we're talking about right? the interaction is a ratio and we cannot quite pinpoint how many exactly are interacting with how many okay so well, that's why we just call it magnesium fluoride, not magnesium difluoride. Because for every magnesium surrounding it, there are, there are fluorines. That's what ionic compound is. It is a giant lattice structure. It can, it's quite vast and endless. So there isn't uh, a fixed ratio like... Uh, there is a fixed ratio, but it's not like hydrogen and fluorine where they are just one molecule, okay? okay? So usually for covalent, you reflect the number of the elements, each element present because they are within one molecule only, okay? Giant lattice is too big, we don't reflect that. Next, explain why with reference to structure and bonding. The boiling point of magnesium fluoride is much higher than that of hydrogen fluoride. Yes, how young? Will we be faulted if in this question we say that the bond break? Oh, which question? This question? Yeah. Okay. When the bonds break, is it? No, like, I say like, more heat is required to break the bond. Oh, okay. Yeah, that still sounds okay. Break the bonds. Depending on what bonds you're talking about also. Are you talking about? Like the, the, the covalent bond. Covalent bonds are. Like the covalent bond is weaker than the ionic bond, so it's easier to break. Ah, okay. But when we are boiling hydrogen fluoride, are we breaking covalent bonds? Or are we breaking the intermolecular forces of attraction? So there's a difference. Huh? Let me draw it out to help you visualize everything now. Huh? So magnesium fluoride. Okay, magnesium fluoride 
okay, shouldn't be drawn like that. Right? Magnesium chloride. Maybe you would like to draw this diagram it's down also, so that you can see the difference. Magnesium chloride. At solid state, you will find these ions like that. This is, this is a solid state. Okay? Liquid state, what would we expect to see? Assuming we can, oh, we can melt metals up. So let's, oh, we can melt ionic compounds. So let's melt this, although the temperature will be very high. Okay, now they are no longer so orderly in fashion. This is what a liquid state ionic compound will look like. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Now the plus, minus are quite everywhere. Okay? They are mobile, now they can move. That's why they can conduct electricity. Yeah? Mm. So they are still attracted, still repelling, but now they are sliding over each other. When they cool down, they will go back to this nice orderly arrangement. Yes, Henry? I always supposed to know if a covalent compound is simple or Okay, good point. How are you supposed to know if hydrogen fluoride is simple covalent or giant covalent lattice? Okay, for giant covalent lattice, usually we'll just use the examples we taught you. Okay, okay, the examples that we taught you, like graphite, diamond, the ones that you see in your textbook, are, those are the examples that we may ask you again. Yeah, or we may say something along the lines of. This particular compound has a structure like graphite. Has a structure like diamond. Then you know that it's not simple molecular. Yeah. Oh yeah? You can just infer because like if the thing is diamond a valent lattice, then it won't be weaker than the iron. Oh okay, that's fair enough also. So hydrogen fluoride, what would that look like? So I'm gonna draw hydrogen fluoride now, huh? Yeah, Jane? Wait, so would they ask you to draw like giant? Wow, why ask you to draw giant covalent? Uh, I can only ask you to draw giant covalent for ones that you know how to draw, which are diamond and graphite. Okay, so the honeycomb. Okay, so the honeycomb. Okay, so solid and liquid, huh? hydrogen fluoride. Okay, so between solid and liquid, what bonds are you breaking? You are breaking the ionic bond. Okay, for those that still not clear, maybe you want to draw this down somewhere. You are breaking the ionic bonds when you are heating things up. Ah, um, but I'm talking about covalent. Okay, so this is ionic. Uh, this is ionic. <coughs> for ionic compounds, when we melt something, we are weakening the ionic bonds. But for covalent, okay, let's look at covalent. Huh? For covalent, when we are melting something, what are we melting? So, this is hydrogen fluoride. Let's draw a solid hydrogen fluoride. Solid hydrogen fluoride. Okay, I'm just going to draw this many more. Wow. Okay, you get a drift. Huh? All of this is hydrogen fluoride. Where is the covalent bond for hydrogen fluoride? It is between the hydrogen and chlorine. So this is where I will draw the covalent bond. Covalent bond is here. Covalent bond. This is what you are drawing here, the sharing of electrons. Where is the intermolecular force of attraction? It's between each one of these molecules. Okay? So this is the intermolecular forces of attraction. What would this look like in liquid state? So now they start to go further apart already. Hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen fluoride. So yes, I'm going to start to weaken the intermolecular force of attraction. This is when you see, start to see the dot dot. 
Okay, the dot dot here is the same intermolecular force of attraction that you are weakening. But you are not weakening the covalent bonds. This is not what you are making. This is still very intact. Okay, so there's a difference when you are melting covalent as well as ionic. The bonds that you are breaking is different. Here you are making ionic bonds. Here you are interrupting the intermolecular force of attraction, not the covalent bonds. Yes, Maya? Yeah? So if we say break itself, it's still Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yes? So ionic bonds are the forces of attraction. Yes, so in this case, what is the force of attraction here? It's the ionic bond. Right, what's holding all these particles together is the ionic bond. Here, what's holding individual molecules together it is the intermolecular force of attraction, not the covalent bond. The covalent bond is holding the atoms together to form that molecule. Okay, so there's a difference here. That's why this diagram is quite important. So this is what is on the board, but in words. Hydrogen fluoride has a simple molecular structure with weak forces of attraction between the molecules. Okay, this is weak. These dotted ones are weak. Magnesium ions, okay, you can ignore the cations and anions. Magnesium fluoride ions are held together by strong ionic bonds. We require more energy to overcome the ionic bonds compared to these weak dotted bonds. You know? Okay, don't call it dotted bonds. These are the intermolecular force of attraction. Yeah? I did not write the structure. I just say like the weak bonds and the strong bonds. Okay. So if you just wrote bonds, they will avoid you maybe half of the overall mark. Because you see, with reference to the structure and the bonding. So the question wants you to mention something about the structure. So what will you mention for the structure? Ionic, you will see a giant ionic lattice structure. Covalent for this particular one, it is a simple molecular uh, structure. Your lesson end already, right? Okay, I will stop here and I'll continue tomorrow. Those that have not done, Okay, rather than submit today, can I see done by tomorrow? Yeah? Okay, by tomorrow, I expect it to be done. Okay? Some of you have not attempted some questions. Or at all.